Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today's question I got from one of my subscribers and here's a question. An organism is having five pairs of chromosomes. What will be the frequency of the gametes having two paternal and three maternal chromosomes? And here is a cell. So imagine that this is cell, diploid cell, and this cell has five pairs of chromosomes. Of course, half of them would be paternally inherited and half of them would be maternally inherited. So 10 chromosomes. So chromosome number one paternally inherit, two, three, four, and five. And also we will have maternally inherited chromosomes, which are going to be homologous to those of paternal chromosomes. One more time, this is diploid organism, which produce gametes. If it is male, then gametes would be sperm. If this is going to be female, then gametes would be egg cells. Let's say this is going to be female diploid organism, and this diploid organism can produce different variants of the gametes. Take a look. For example, gametes are going to be haploid. For the first pair of the chromosomes, of course, gamete would inherit only one of these two. So it can be maternally, maternal or paternal chromosome. Let's say this is paternal. And for the chromosome number two, let's say just by random chance, it's going to be uh, maternal. And then paternal, paternal, and maternal. So three paternal, two maternal chromosomes from each pair of chromosomes. Of course, chromosomes are not arranged in pairs in the cell and float randomly inside the nucleus. And uh, you just have to understand that gamete would inherit just one chromosome from each pair and would be thus haploid. And of course, different combinations are possible. Another combination would be, imagine that all chromosomes would be paternally inherited. So all of them just by random chance can be uh, from each pair would represent those chromosomes that this organism got from the father side. Another combination can be imagine that all chromosomes would be maternally inherited. So all five. Is this possible? Yes, it is possible. And for example, yet another combination would be when we will have four maternally inherited and one paternally inherited. So combinations are many. How many? Let's find. Let's say that each empty box here is going to represent one chromosome in an egg cell. So five boxes would represent five chromosomes. And let's say this is going to be a chromosome number one. So number one, this is going to be number two, number three, number four, and number five. F so from each pair of chromosomes in the X cell, we would find only one, whether paternally or maternally inherited. For the chromosome number one, how many variants are possible? Two variants possible. Whether it's going to be paternally inherited chromosome or maternally inherited chromosome. And for the chromosome number two, again, two variants exist. For the chromosome number three, also two variants exist. And the same is true for chromosome number four and five. So how many different combinations of the gametes we may have? And it is easy, we just have to multiply all these probabilities and we are going to get 32 combinations. Now I want you to show common mistake and the guy who sent me this question made this mistake and then I will show you a correct solution and you would understand this type of the problems much better. So this guy proposed that, let's say that first chromosome would be uh, paternally inherited, second also would be paternally inherited, and three would be maternally inherited, and each time probability would be one half, so we have two choices, and 
one half would be probability that it's going to be paternally inherited. One half would be probability that second also would be paternally inherited. One half, one half, and then one half that it's going to be maternally inherited. And he just proposed that we have to multiply this one half, one half, one half, and one half. And the answer should be 1 over 32. So answer 1. But this is wrong. Why? Because uh, in our problem, order of the events is not given. It just said 2 paternal and 3 maternal. But specific order is not given. And this answer would be correct if order would be given. For example, if the question would be, what is the probability that chromosome number one would be paternally inherited and chromosome number two would be paternally inherited and all the rest would be maternally inherited. Then this is going to be the correct answer. But an order in our problem is not given. So there have to be a different approach. I think that the best way to explain how to solve this problem would be to use Pascal's triangle. If you don't know what is a Pascal's triangle, I will show you how to build it and it's going to take just seconds. For example, for me, if I would have such a problem on exam, it would take, if uh, Pascal's triangle wouldn't be given to me, maybe under one minute to solve. If Pascal's triangle would be given, it would take me about 10, 15 seconds only. So how we build Pascal's triangle? We put one on top. This is going to be row zero. Then we put one and one on the below row and we call this row one. And next row also, which is going to be row number two, starts with one. And then we put two here and one here. How we made this row? What is the logic? The logic is as follows. So we just have to add these numbers from the previous row. And this is how we get this number here. And all numbers on the sides are going to be just one. For the row three, for the row three, we again start with one. Then we add these two numbers and we are going to get three. So we put three here. Then we have to add these two numbers and we are going to get three here and we are going to get one here because on the sides we have one and one. Next row would be row number four. And again, we start with one. Then we add these two numbers and we are going to get four. Then we add these two numbers and we are going to get six here. And then we add these two numbers and we are going to get four and we end with one here. And next row and the last one would be row number five. I also would explain why this is going to be the last row for us today. Again, we start with one. Here we are going to have five. Next number is going to be 10. And next number is going to be 10 again. Next number is going to be five. So five and the last is going to be one. So this is what we call Pascal's triangle. And this is logic behind how we build Pascal's triangle. It is very easy as you see. Our next step would be to add numbers in each row. It is also very easy. One here and one plus one would give us two. So we put two here. And in the next row, one plus two plus one would give us four. And I don't actually have to add all these numbers, though it is easy. Four plus four would give us eight in the next row. And now you see the pattern. All the numbers just grow twice with each row. So in the next row, we are going to get 16. And in the last row, we are going to get 32. Now let's talk about what these numbers in each row means. For example, what this one means. This number one stands for the number of combinations of probability to inherit five 
chromosomes and all these chromosomes are going to be paternally inherited. So only one such combination possible where all five chromosomes are going to be paternally inherited. And what this five stand for? Five stand for the number of uh, variants of having uh, four paternal chromosomes and one maternally inherited chromosome. What the ten stand for? It stand for the number of combinations of having three paternally inherited chromosomes and two maternally inherited chromosomes. What this ten stand for? It stand for the number of combinations of having two paternally inherited chromosomes and three maternally inherited chromosomes. And these five stand for the number of combinations of having one paternal chromosome and four maternally inherited chromosome. And this one stand for the number of combinations of having all chromosomes to be maternally inherited. And this is only one such combination. So one combination of having all five chromosomes maternally inherited. And this 32 here stands for the total number of combinations. According to our problem, we have to find uh, probability of having two paternal chromosomes in a gamete and three maternally inherited chromosomes in the same gamete. And as you see, number of such combinations is going to be 10. 10 out of total number of combinations, 32. 10 over 32. And this is going to be our answer today. Take a look. And this is going to be answer 3. 10 over 32. One more time, when order of events is given, we just multiply individual probabilities of each event and this is how we get probability of certain sequence. And if order of the events is not given, you can just use Pascal's triangle in order to solve your problem. Just looking at this Pascal's triangle, it is very easy to answer a number of different questions. For example, what is the probability to have four paternally inherited chromosomes and one maternal? And the answer is going to be 5 out of 32. What is the probability that all chromosomes are going to be maternally inherited? And the answer is going to be 1 out of 32. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.